So uh, I'm Alad Siti, uh, the CEO and uh, one of the two founders of uh, Neuroblade. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, Neuroblade, uh, the company that we built and how we are accelerating uh, big data analytics. Um, and after me, Modi and Krishna, uh, our VP of Marketing and our Chief Product are also going to give a couple of sessions. Uh, we further deep dive into the market and the product. Um, so, um, um, yeah, so uh, let's just start. And, and by the way, um, do feel free to interrupt me with uh, any question, uh, make it a conversation, uh, always more interesting. Um, so um, we started Neuroblade that uh, 2018 um, with the aim to uh, to change how data is being processed. Um, today we are over 120 employees. Uh, we fundraised over 100 million dollars. Um, um, most of the company is based in uh, Tel Aviv in Israel, and also in Palo Alto in the U.S. Uh, where my co-founder and uh, CTO of Neuroblade, uh, Eliad Hillel, is uh, based at. And um, I think actually one of the most amazing things for, for us uh, in this slide is that we are actually shipping these uh, modules already, and we are already seeing customers um, starting to get value from what we have built. Um, so a little bit about this field of, uh, of data analytics. I can tell you really a quick, uh, a quick story uh, that uh, when uh, we started Neuroblade, as I said, back in 2018, and we had a great uh, catch line uh, for the seed funding uh, capital raising. Um, and it was that we wanted to build NVIDIA of data. Um, and slowly we zoned in um, on what do we actually want to speed up, and then we understood it. This is data analytics, and we understood it through talking to all those uh, big hyperscale companies, big banks, big uh, pharma companies, um, and all of them pointed out at the problem of speeding up their SQL queries um, or speeding up uh, lookups or anyone. They, they had many names for it. Only the last few years, everyone started to say really big data analytics or analytical databases. Um, it was a bit surprising to us because, um, you know, SQL has been around here since the 70s, started with um, research, um, BI, decision support, and then there is more and more data. The, world, uh, the buzzword uh, data mining, mining is, is starting to gain traction. Then in the year 2000, the web is, is coming up strongly, and then IoT, and we are starting to gather more data, and we are starting to try and analyze the behaviors of customers, um, the behaviors of people, and how do we um, you know, uh, bring the ads to them and make more money out of it, and, and also you know, positive things, trying to uh, you know, uh, understand behaviors to make a better world. And this brought the era of uh, AI and machine learning. So we started to have these models and we had then much more uh, data to manage and to feed into those machines. Um, and lastly, there is all this trend of uh, generative AI, which is causing another explosion in data. So what we can see in all these, um, all along these lines, we get more value from data. But to get more value from data, we need to save the data and we need to analyze this data. So it means we have more and more queries over time. And um, and something interesting, actually, in the last inflection point of language models, if through all out those uh, events, we had more data that caused more queries. Now we actually have just more queries because more people can uh, can just have more queries. And I'm talking about the fact that um, many of the data, uh, database vendors, and we actually have one client that's also doing it himself, um, are starting to add language models as the front end of their databases. It means that if before that, only 1% of the people in organization could ask questions about data because he needed to be a programmer or a data analyst or an SQL expert, um, and you had to go to your BI team or your analytics team uh, to ask the question. Now, 
Um, once those interfaces completely transfer to be language, uh, natural language oriented, everyone in an organization can ask a question. And another interesting thing is that when you interact with those language models, you don't ask just the question that you want. You usually ask 10, 20 questions before you're getting to the question that you want. So we keep having more and more data. And on top of that, now we have more and more queries. And already in the last years, we can see that the infrastructure cannot um, keep up with, with uh, numbers of uh, queries uh, or the amounts of data that we are collecting. And we can see that in the last few years, um, actually the query per hour per dollar is starting to flatter. It means that um, double, uh, double, the, double the data doesn't mean that double the CPUs or double the GPUs would do the work for you. Um, you'll sometimes need 10x more or even more, and, and you'll keep spending more and more, uh, more and more on hardware just to get the, to the pace and to the value that you need to, uh, to get from your data. Um, so going a little bit backward, um, and this is where we actually started Neuroblade from. Okay? Uh, we were playing around with uh, um, you know, data intensive uh, applications. Specifically, we were playing around with uh, stock trading and uh, both Eliane and myself are originally, uh, when we were very young, uh, real-time engineers. And we started into looking into why are these applications not running fast? And what we understood is that CPUs are simply built for general purpose workloads. They are built to run whatever you tell them to run. They'll try to run it as fast as they can, but they are not specifically built to, to any specific uh, workload. And then it was 2017 where we were playing around. Uh, the GPU buzz was just uh, starting. We said, okay, we'll try a GPU. A GPU is, is, a, is we called it, or in Hebrew, everyone called it, it's strong. Uh, strong in what? Um, and, um, and apparently GPUs are great for compute intensive workloads where you have a lot of multipliers, and, and we are talking about things like graphics, where NVIDIA started from, graphics, gaming, and then um, all the deep learning, which requires, again, uh, massive amounts of multiply accumulate units. Um, but what we were playing with was really much more about the data, the data flow, uh, management of data structures, management of memory, management of uh, networking and storage. And indeed, what we saw when we started talking to all those companies uh, that I've mentioned before, the hyperscalers, the, uh, the enterprises, um, problems that a few years ago were very local and basically were a software problem are now becoming a real big infrastructure problem, a real scale problem, and it's becoming a compute problem, a network problem, a storage problem, um, and then, of course, also energy and space and eventually, and, and this is true probably for any acceleration company, eventually it's still uh, a very, very big software problem. Even if you have an accelerator, it's still a big uh, software problem. How do you scale? And we saw that many of uh, the hyperscale companies are starting to build their own internal solutions to speed up uh, SQL querying, or as I said, uh, data analytics, or uh, lookups, or, uh, or, or uh, any other names. And this is because, and when we are talking to these companies uh, these days, and also because uh, you can see this also from the uh, recent research, those companies are spending over $1 billion, uh, each company, just for compute for this workload. It's not including the storage and the talking and all these things. So if we can change that, we can really change uh, the paradigm, save a lot of money. Uh, and not just that, um, um, we can also save energy and we can, of course, gain much more insights from, from for all our customers from uh, their data. Um, and this is all due to the Neuroblade uh, SPU. Uh, or as we call it, a, a, a SQL processing unit. Uh, as you can see, we try to go for a very descriptive uh, name. In the past, we were trying to play with different uh, different names. Eventually, we went for something pretty 
uh, straightforward. What's special about it? It's uh, eventually an accelerator that is built specifically for data analytics. Okay, it's not about um, having um, multi cores uh, for uh, multiplications, and it's not about being able to run anything. It's about being able to help the CPU run data analytics much, much faster. When I'm saying much, much faster, I'll show you a few of the results that we are getting with customers. I'm talking about 30x performance at a third of the cost. Um, at other places, um, you know, not all results are that amazing as the ones that I've mentioned, but 10x. But it's, as I've said, the, the spend is so big that even reducing 30 40% of the $1 billion spent is a game changer for those big uh, companies and enterprises. Um, so um, going back to the SPU, um, when we designed it, um, and it took us, you can see almost, uh, you know, uh, almost six years uh, in development, um, we wanted to make sure it's built for the modern architecture um, that are most common in, uh, in cloud environments. It's built for disaggregated storage and compute. And you can also see that uh, from the engines that we are currently supporting and speeding up. And it's also leading to the next bullet, which is um, you can build the world's uh, greatest uh, processor or greatest accelerator if it does not have the right software stack that allows you to integrate easily and not having to learn a new architecture or a new language. And uh, it has to give you uh, the ability to turn things on and off very quickly. And we are not there. Um, and this is why we chose not to build our own new analytics engine, but uh, to connect and speed up the analytics engines that the customers are actually using today. So you can see here three examples that we are uh, working with diff different customers on these days, connecting and speeding up those um, analytics engines. And we also have customers who have their own engines and we are connecting to speeding up their own engines. So the idea is again, meet the customer where it's easiest for the customer to adapt you. And this is also true for the hardware integration. You can see this is a standard PCIe, uh, PCIe card, fits into any server. Either this is uh, your OEM server, I'll talk about that a little bit in a second, or your own ODM server, a server that you are designing on your own, and uh, the, the SPU can, of course, fit in uh, there easily. Um, so for the different um, enterprises, um, as I said, we are uh, working also with OEMs. So last year we announced a partnership um, with Dell and we've qualified uh, the, the SPU in a Dell PowerEdge uh, server. Um, and for enterprises who want to use that technology, they can just buy uh, through Dell a server, uh, a Dell server that has the SPU built in. And for the hyperscale customers or big tech, companies who are building their own infrastructure um, we have uh, they can buy directly from us uh, the SPU card um, and integrate it into their own server uh, design. Um, and um, lastly, just sharing a few of the results that we've shared uh, publicly in the past. Um, so um, we've been doing oh I see a, I see a hand raised. Uh, yeah, I think that's mine. This is Andrew Brost. How are you? Hey, Andrew. Um, you'll probably get to this, so I don't want to step on your punchline. But in terms of this integration, is what you're doing somehow working in concert with the query optimizers in these engines? Or are you just sort of generally accelerating the compute that queries tend to, the compute work that queries tend to dispatch to the so CPU? Yeah, so so Krishna is actually going to touch uh, to touch more on that in a second, but okay. um, I, I will tell you uh, that um, he, he's going to dive deeper into that. Um, um, but basically, what we are doing is we have uh, Daxel, which is our um, our software layer, and sort of an API to our card, 
And basically this integrates into the query planner um, of those common platforms. We are not trying to change the query planner, but the way this works is that whatever we are very good at speeding up is getting pushed down to the hardware and then we are speeding that up. If we are not able to, uh, to process it or we are not able to speed up, CPU keeps doing its own thing. Sorry, can I, can I have a question? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, my question here is, uh, so I understand that this um, uh, API, uh, it's a piece of the software that is uh, working uh, at the uh, operational system level, right? Or it's, yes. okay. So it's like a daemon, right? That it's working. Uh, okay, no, it's much more complex All right. than that. Uh, it's, uh, it integrates a little bit differently between the platforms. Um, but yeah, eventually it's um, you know it's a layer of drivers, it's a layer of middleware. Okay. And eventually, you have the API. So it's like a software base, but more like integration of the drivers level. Uh, it's you know both driver level and then and then, and then another level above that. Um, and the key here, um, and again, I'm going to spoil some of the things that are going to come up next. But the key here is to be able to support. Um, a lot of standards, and again, uh, this is a sentence that I've mentioned, just like I said, meet the customer uh, where it's uh, easiest for him to integrate with you. It goes along the way. Use the file format that he's using, use the memory layouts that he's using, and so on. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so just sharing a few of the results that uh, we made public uh, during last year. So we did uh, we did some work with uh, the Velox team um, at Meta, uh, trying to accelerate Velox, and basically by that accelerating uh, Presto and Spark, we were able to see results of speeding up over 30x uh, of, uh, of the benchmarks. Um, um, and again, Krishna is going to touch a little bit on, you know, uh, the ecosystem and also more about the different formats and uh, and how we integrate into the standard environments that there are out there uh, today. Um, but I do, uh, I, I did leave one interesting, um, interesting uh, results from a customer uh, that we have. This is a customer in the healthcare space. Um, they have a lot of records. They have a system which allows their users to connect to the system and ask questions on uh, on that uh, on the data. And you can see here that uh, with uh, the current generation that they have, um, you can see that they have um, runtimes for again real queries, real customer data. Um, you can see that the runtimes for queries here is anywhere between one minute to about three minutes. It means that there's somewhere out there a user that gets up in the morning, gets to his chair, shooting, a, gets to his station, shooting a query, and then he leaves the desk. He doesn't know how much time the query is going to take. He's going for a coffee. He's coming back. Maybe the query ended. Maybe it didn't. And um, you can see with Neuroblade, this guy is just not leaving his chair. Even at the longest query that he has, it takes nine seconds. <laughs> so it completely changes how his day looks like. And I can say that aside from saving time, we are also optimizing his coffee consumption because he doesn't live to for, for coffee uh, so many times uh, um, a day. Yeah, I have a question regarding the SVU. So if you put that piece of hardware in your system, your server, uh, do organizations then, if it's going to be like 30, 30 times faster, like the one slide was showing, do organizations then have the ability to, for example, buy cheaper servers if they're getting that performance from uh, your piece of hardware that they're putting in? So they're obviously saving money from uh, the data analytics speed, right, versus not using your product. But if they buy cheaper servers as well because they're getting that boost anyways, uh, that's something that there, there's a recommendation around or... Is it still like, no, buy the beefiest servers that you can and then put our hardware in? Um, I, I can only tell you what we are seeing in practice that's happening. And again, this is because um, a lot of these customers are really um, hyperscale customers who are designing their own servers. Right. Um, and this is also about building trust with these customers. So right now, I'd say they will keep buying uh, very beefy servers, put the SVU require less servers, 
But if worst case, if worst comes to worst, they can just shut off the SPU and run um, just as before. Right. And you know, uh, a few years from now, maybe two years from now, you know, it, it gets deployed much more widely, um, and then they can start playing with okay, I'll buy a cheaper server. Eventually, it's about having so much servers anyway. It's not for the you know uh, small shops that have one or two uh, instances. It's about scale. So yeah. what you actually want to do is you want to have much less servers and not necessarily uh, uh, smaller servers. I right. I, I have a question about <clears throat> the architecture in terms of virtualization. So does your card support virtualized workloads? Uh, because I know. Or are you assuming bare metal for all of these uh, big data big data deployments? Um, no. So uh, again, the the main idea right now is is to work with um, is to work with companies who are building their own infrastructure, and this is bare metal. Mm-hmm. But working Dockerize, Kubernetes, and so on. Uh, so okay, so. Well, yeah, today you're you're looking at bare metal servers running, uh, you know, whatever the operating system is, and integrating directly with the hardware. So you wouldn't support uh, a workload that's running on a virtual machine or in a containerized uh, setup. So container containerized, yes. Uh, virtualization is something that we are still not working on because again, it doesn't come from the customer side yet. Right. Okay. So you do support containerized because that has different access to to the hardware. Okay, mm-hmm. that makes sense because I see a lot of organizations are using containers along with AI because the libraries and everything are mostly built into containers and distributed by Nvidia and, and other vendors. Yeah. But but by the way, I will I will tell you um, to add to what you are saying. Um, the cases that we are seeing um, um, are mostly servers that are dedicated specifically for this workload. It's not that they are doing uh, other tests like AI and uh, or it's part of the AI stack, but they are still running data analytics. It's a Spark server, it's a Presto server, mm-hmm. it's a ClickHouse server. But it doesn't do any other uh, stuff. Okay. And for, forgive my ignorance here, but are you primarily targeting structured data or do you also support unstructured data for querying? Yeah, so software, software-wise, software we are uh, uh, very much focused on structured data. We do have a customer using the same APIs that uh, we are uh, giving to uh, to run some analysis on unstructured data, but our main focus is structured data. You'll see that, you know, structured or, unstru- sorry, structured or unstructured, a lot of the um, operators uh, would apply for both. Okay. Thank you. But main focus, main focus is, is structured right now. Gotcha. So I, I, have, I have two questions. Uh, so you showed us the benchmark of you know a few queries. Have you run your benchmark on a standard TPC DS or TPC? Mm-hmm. Uh, so and what are the results from that? Well, we'll release an official benchmark in a couple of uh, months, probably. Okay. Uh, also on your SPU, uh, what kind of what, what is a GPU? Maybe you covered that. Is it like an NVIDIA? What what's a chipset you use? No, for us it's ours. It's uh it's our own. That's yeah. That's mm-hmm. the IP. Mm-hmm. So I, that, we are not the idea is not using a CPU or a GPU. Uh, I see. Mm-hmm. Is it okay? So, I, I, I'm i just having a, a, a little bit of trouble level setting here. So it seems like you're mostly targeting the, you know, the so-called, so-called modern data stack engines, Presto, Spark, I guess, ClickHouse was another one. Mm-hmm. I feel like mostly these days, those are run in the cloud, right? Obviously, there are going to be certain companies that do a, do a ton of stuff on-prem. Um, and so, you know, cross what I said, but I feel like the major market for those engines is in the cloud and that if you're targeting folks who are doing stuff mostly on-prem, why not target the 
um, platforms that are also on-prem, the major RDBMS platforms or their data warehouse variants. Um, for example, uh, Microsoft's analytics platform or um, you know uh, Oracle's warehouse and so forth. So uh, now I'll say uh, again, it's a it's a market question or go-to-market question. Um, our main target today, you could say, are uh, hyperscale customers who are their own cloud providers. You could say, okay, uh, it's their internal infrastructure. They are their own users. Um, they are not necessarily on-prem because they are the cloud providers, and we are trying, you know, like take, uh, you know. Well, their premises might be a colo uh, facility, but still, they control the hardware. Is the point. Yeah, they control the hardware and they also are their own, uh, you could say, their own independent software vendors, right? Um, someone like Microsoft is not usually buying uh, uh, software from SAP or Oracle. They are doing their own, you know, uh, things based on either Microsoft SQL or, uh, or Spark or Presto or uh, ClickHouse. Mm -hmm. And so you see that these three... Uh, Engines are really quite common, and also when you are looking into, uh, you know, uh, companies like uh, Ahana, which IBM acquired, this is, uh, you know, Presto, mm -hmm. Trino, uh, you look into uh, um, um, uh, Starburst, it's uh, based on, uh, again, Presto, Trino, I don't remember which one, and so you see that even when there are these uh, on-prem uh, independent software vendors, they are also based on these platforms. Um, we can also, and as I've mentioned, we are also working with some companies to speed up um, their own engines. So again, so you you might OEM to the Starbursts and the Databricks of the world, the, the two companies you quoted. And by the way, Starburst is definitely Trino. They're the they're the ones who had to change the name of their engine from Presto to Trino. Yeah, um, I always I, I admit that I always mix up between who's yeah. there. I who, chose, who chose which branch? <laughs> okay, so, right. I, so I have a question. Um, as a longtime Oracle database administrator who knows intimately how the Oracle optimizer works, I'm really at a loss how your product would bring value to, say, somebody running an Oracle database on the cloud, an autonomous database on Exadata, for example, which is specifically designed to handle queries that uh, may need massive amounts of uh, full table scans, right? So it seems to me that, again, I'm not being critical yet, but <laughs> it seems to me that um, yeah. you're, you're really hitting some of the niche, um, uh, more niche, more open source database sources like Apache Spark. I mean, yeah, that's great, but there's enormous numbers of huge companies running, you know, on SQL Server, even Postgres and other Oracle knockoffs, if you will, right? Um, mm -hmm. I'm a little curious as to how you could bring any value to the larger, uh, you know, databases in the petabyte range with your SQL processing. I'll be quiet and let you answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, again, we are. Uh, if you look at the organizations that we are targeting, you'll see that they are not very heavy on Oracle consumption. They have huge Spark consumption. They have huge Presto consumption. They have huge ClickHouse consumption. Okay. They don't have a lot of uh, Oracle consumption. Oracle is, um, and again, not saying anything bad about Oracle. We'd be happy to work with Oracle to help them speed up uh, Oracle Extra Data. We've been tested against Oracle Exadata in the past mm. and benchmarked against it. Um, Good. When would those benchmarks uh, be available so we can actually see them? The benchmark against Exadata? Yeah. Uh, we'll, that would be an issue. No, seriously, a fair comparison would be extremely interesting. I think a more fair comparison would be to the, you know, uh, Sparks and the uh, Prestos of the world, which is what we, which is the market that we are aiming at. Um, okay, that's cool. It, I just want to make sure I understand what market we're talking about. That's all. Mm -hmm. Again, think hyperscale companies uh, who have their own solutions and want to speed their own infrastructure. Makes sense. Okay, thanks.
So this yep. is Kimberly Bates. I got a question on your statement about integration. Um, you stated that there's easy integration. Um, what are you meaning by that? I mean, I, I can see it's a very easy integration to a piece of hardware. So you just kind of slide that into the slot. Um, or right. are you also talking about integration as it pertains to a database? And if it is about a database, how have you made it easy? Yeah, so again, it's 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 relating, and I'll, I'll let actually Krishna uh, cover that uh, in his session. Good, okay. Uh, but I will tell you um, how long that did it take to the last customer that did his own integration specifically to Presto. Um, a few months ago, it took a customer three months. Um, in the last month, it took a customer about a week. To do the integration integration in their soft and in, in what what were you integrating right. into their own integration of neuroblade api to their own software stack and that software that was their own software stack and what do you That's mean by their own software stack their database or their application or what no no their their infrastructure like their resto or their spa <laughs> or, uh, they, they each take their own uh, they each have their own, you know, Spark implementation or their own Presto implementation, right? Or their own ClickHouse implementation. It's not like we provide reference how to connect to Presto, but their Presto already looks nothing like the open source Presto that's out there. So they need to integrate again to their own to their own Presto uh, design. Okay. 